Good evening. Yeah, we've got a few people. Let's get started. So um, for those of you that, are, that have seen the Facebook post, or those of you who haven't, um, my name is Ben Beckwith. Uh, the team at Sprite have asked me to, to come on as a guest uh, and open up their, their live streaming sessions on Facebook. So um, hi, Rafael. So what I'm doing today or this evening uh, is going to do four river patterns, so dry flies that I'm going to use uh, from about now for the rest of the season. Uh, four super, super simple patterns, really, really easy to tie, minimal materials, but ones that are absolute essentials for, for any time in the river. So the hook I've got in the vise, it's a Sprite buzzer. This is a size 12, um, but for the pattern I'm going to show you, I generally tie them from sort of 16s down to 20s, uh, but purely for the, the purpose of this live stream video, uh, I'm tying on a 12. Um, so thread, it's just some small olive thread. And we'll get started on here. And then I'm going to put a little base, about three mil on, and then snip off the waist piece. And that is that is it. This is, a, is probably the simplest midge pattern that, that you could ever, ever tie of a fish. Um, it was a pattern that was showed to me a few years ago by, by a guy, Welsh guy called Gareth Lewis, um, amazing river angler. This is possibly the simplest river dry fly you could ever tie, but it's caught me some amazing fish. Um, and it's one of those flies that when fish are either taking midges or they're just taking those tiny little flies that you just you can't begin to try and imitate, this is the perfect fly for that. So for the wing, I've just got two pieces of CDC, two feathers, uh, and I've married up tips, at least like so, and I'll tie that on, slightly adjust that hook, um, and it's going to tie that straight off the front. Again, this is a very, very big one. Um, this is purely uh, for you guys, so you can see much more clearly what I'm doing. As I mentioned before, I generally tie this fly in 16s down to 20, so really, really small. Um, targeting those fish that are, that are taking sort of those tiny, tiny little, little midges and things on, on, the, on the water. So snip off the waist piece, get rid of that, and then we're just gonna come in and tidy that up. Um, next material. Just got some bog standard pearl crystal flash. Um, you can use pearl, you can use UV crystal flash, you can use umpteen different colours. Pearl, I think, is is pretty standard. Um, a little bit of flash, a little bit of attraction. Could it represent the shuck? Potentially. Honestly, I just use it as a little bit of attraction. Um, the fish seem to like it. It's not, uh, you don't absolutely have to have it, but it's just quite nice. And all I'm going to do is tie that on. Uh, two strands and just come in between like so you don't have to split them but sometimes it's just quite nice they splay nicely as you can see got a little V shape there just so it's quite nice and the fish seem to like it so I like to keep it on um, if you look on the crystal flash you can see the curls I usually like about three curls uh, depending on the size if you're on a 20 you know, two curls is ample, but just a tiny little bit of flash is just going to draw the attention of the fish. And then to finish off, as I mentioned, this is this incredibly simple fly, a little bit of pine squirrel dubbing. Super, super sparse. One thing you'll notice with uh, most of the flies I'll tie this evening, um, I like them very, very sparse. So my dubbing ropes, most of the time you can see thread through them. Um, I don't want too much. Nice and wispy. You don't need too much on it. And then just come off um, and tie off. As I say, this is, this is a great fly, especially on those sort of summer evenings. Fish are just topping, taking tiny, tiny little dry flies. Um, and this is a perfect imitation for those. Um, I don't tend to super glue my flies. A double whip finish, I find, will, will suffice nine times out of ten. Um, and there you are. That That's literally it, as I say. Incredibly simple, but that will take you a lot of fish in the super, super small sizes. So we'll move on to the next one. Um, any questions, guys, just f feel free to, to jump on the chat and I'll do what I can to, to answer them. Um, next fly, this is a an olive emerger. So again, a pattern that I picked up from uh, anglers much better than myself. So this is a Stefan Jones pattern, another exceptional Welsh river angler. Um, and this, this fly has caught me a huge amount of fish on the rivers when, uh, when there's olives hatching. So it's technically a BW, uh, blue and olive emerger, 
but again, the same fly, you know, change the color of the body slightly and it will represent any olive um, on the river. So again, same olive thread, uh, same size 12 hook, purely for the, for the purpose of the video. Um, if I was fishing these, I'd be fishing again, 16s down to 20, 22s, uh, depending on what the size of the, the flies are coming off. So go down, not all the way, but just an, a good way down. And then for the tail, just a little bit of Coq de Leon. Um, you don't want too much when it comes to dry fly tails, especially on emerges, because if you put too many fibers in, it won't bite in as well. So three, maybe four um, fibers at a push. I'm just gonna pull those off. Um, length, relatively short. It is an emerger, um, so it's just breaking out of its uh, shuck. So nice and short. Obviously, the, the adult would have much longer tails, but this is an emerge, so it's nice and short. And then what I like to do is with all my tails, especially when I'm trying to, trying to create a taper with the body, what I'll do is I'll, I'll tie the excess all the way up to where the thorax would be, and then I fold it back on itself, but not all the way. So maybe about a third of the way, and then snip it off and then work my way back up towards the front, just tidying it in. Um, but what this does as well is it creates a small thread taper. And as I mentioned before, I really, really like uh, sparse, wispy dubbing. So if you already have a small uh, tapered shape that you've made with your thread, uh, you can get away with really, really sparse dubbing and the shape's already created for you. Whereas if you had um, no taper with your thread, you maybe have to use a bit more dubbing to get that shape. So as I mentioned, this is a blue winged olive emerger, so uh, a bit of blue winged olive dyed beaver. Um, I love beaver for my dry flies. Uh, you can use any sort of dubbing uh, as long as it's the right color, but I just, I use a lot of beaver. Um, and again, I don't know if you can see here, super, super sparse dubbing rope. Um, and I sort of put it on as I go. So put a little bit on, see how it goes, see how it looks and then just slowly wrap it up. You can see as I go further down the dubbing rope, it does get slightly thicker. Um, again, that's just aiding that taper on the fly. And then what you can do, this is just a, a cocktail stick I've chopped up and sellotaped a bit of Velcro to. Just pull it out a little bit. If there's a little bit too much, and if there's too much even then, you can just pull it down, drag it out like so. And that's nice, just like that. A little touch more, just to create that shape at the end there. And that should be perfect. And again, just brush it out. You see you get that nice sort of wispy looking body and then that's just going to look absolutely fantastic in the water just like the the flies just pulling out of that shuck it looks perfect uh next piece this isn't essential but i like to have a little bit of contrasting dubbing behind the flash i'm going to put in just a smidge don't think it makes a difference but confidence wise it's just for me it's the back of that thorax flash bit of medium opal mirage. Again, I like a little bit of flash in some of my dry flies. It just adds that extra little bit of attraction. It just separates your fly from all the other thousands that are, that are flowing down the river. And what I'm gonna do is, is literally uh, two turns, but on top of each other. And what that does is just with one turn, it can slip. With two turns, it gives you a little bit of more security. And again, being on top of each other, it's not too much flash. I don't know if you can pick it up, but it's just a tiny little extra uh, piece of attraction that's gonna differentiate your fly from the rest of the ones that the fish see. Wing again, two CDC feathers that I've just put the tips aligned. Uh, the difference between this and the, and the previous fly, so the previous fly, I use the natural curves facing up, so they just sit cocked as an emerger with this one uh, because it's going to be facing backwards 
if you look at the natural curve of the CDC, it's going towards the back. I'm going to put this flat on top like so. So wing, not too long, maybe about the back, if not a little bit shorter. They're not quite lined up. That'll do just about there. And then you want to come in pinchingly, but just tie that down. And if it's not right, loosen your thread slightly and you can just gently pull it through. And that's about perfect. It's a little wing just as it's bursting out. It's looking good. And then you just want to snip off your waist piece. Try that in the bin. Lovely. Tied up a little bit. And again, as with before, really, really simple flies. I mean, you don't need to, you can overcomplicate your dry flies. You can make them look supernatural, all different kinds of materials. And you really can sort of go to town on them. But I think simplicity is, is best. It, it's the key, especially with these sort of river flies. The, tr the trout have got teeth, they're going to pull them apart. So really as simple as you can get them, you can, you can batch tie them relatively quickly and not have to worry about them. You know, you get it stuck in a tree, you haven't spent 20 minutes on a beautifully perfect dry fly. You've spent five on a nice scraggly looking emerger that's going to catch a lot of fish. Um, so the dubbing I use for thorax there is just a bit of uh, natural fox squirrel. The reason I like fox squirrel is it's nice and spiky. Um, and for the front of that fly, just where it's sort of, it's bursting out, you want it to be nice and scruffy, the legs are coming out. Um, and it's just gonna look really, really nice. And as I say, this is a fly that's taken me a lot of fish um, over the last sort of year or so after Stefan showed it to me. It's been awesome. And that's it. It, it really is as simple as that. You can see how the profile will sit really nicely uh, in the water. So you've got the body, nice scruffy little thorax, and then that wing, because it's flat, it will allow the body to get right into the film and it will just sit perfectly with the body tucked in and the wing on top of the water. It's gonna look awesome. It's gonna catch you a lot of fish. Uh, the next fly, um, this can be a, an adult olive. Again, really, really simple. This one's got I know, three, four materials. Um, for this, switching over to the to the Sprite dry fly hook. Um, again, it's a, it's a 12 for the purpose of the video, but normally I tie these much, much smaller. Uh, 14s, again, down to 22s, depending on the type of olive, depending on, on the hatch that's going on. Same olive thread. Um, I'm just gonna start that at the eye and tie down to about the point, just like so, and snip off the waist piece. Again, again, come back to Cote de Lyon. Uh, three, four fibers at most. Again, you don't need too many. You don't want too many. If you think, look at the naturals, they generally only have sort of um, three tails, prongs. Um, so you keep it sort of relatively similar. Like so, if you pull them up, so you look at the stem, and if you look, as they come up, they, they taper up towards the top, um, and these tips aren't lined up. You don't have to do this, but I like to do it. It's sort of a, you know, a personal preference thing. I think it looks better when they're all the same length. Um, it looks more natural. Cheers, Vigo. Um, I think it just looks good. So if you pull it 90 degrees, as you can see, they're all lined up uh, and, and perfectly aligned there so just pinch those and take them off tail length about probably the length of the shank um, and then just come over the pinch and loop and then don't fully tie it down too happy maybe a little bit shorter there that'll do all I'm going to do is tie that as I did before up to the thorax and then back down a little bit, not all the way, and then back up again. Now for this particular one, that's super important to have a, um, a thread taper. And the reason for that is because the body's gonna be strip quill. Now with dubbing, 
you can create a taper um, without using the thread itself. That's absolutely fine. With strip quill, it molds the shape of the body. So you cannot do anything um, body shape wise unless you've created it before you wrap the strip quill on. Because if you try and layer the strip quill, you lose the effect. So you must, must, must have a thread base um, that is perfect to the body shape to then allow you to create the profile of the fly. So again, by tying from the top here, it gonna, again, aid that taper slightly wider at the top, tapering down to much smaller at the base, and then touching turns back up. Maybe a couple more in the middle there. As you can see, there's no lumps, there's no bumps. It's a nice smooth transition for the body uh, and smooth for the, for the quill. And then some hackle plies. Be worn strip quill can be quite a brittle material. So generally, if I'm, if I'm batch tying, what I'll do is I have a small bowl of water on my desk and I'll put all the quills that I'm gonna be using to tie my flies in that water. And what that does is it just softens them up and it makes them a lot less brittle. So then when you come to actually tie them on, they don't snap, they don't break. Um, and they last a lot longer when you're tying the fly. It just saves you time, really, and it saves you quills. Quills aren't, you know, they're not cheap if you buy them uh, pre-stripped, so the more that you can save by doing things like that, uh, the better. Now, obviously, as I mentioned, uh, strip quills are quite brittle, so what I'm gonna do is with a little bit of UV resin, just touch it up. And this will just basically make the quill last a few more fish. Um, without doing this, without its added protection, you'd probably get maybe one or two fish out of a fly before it got trashed. Whereas a little bit of, a little bit of resin, you can probably get up to 10, 15 fish, maybe more, maybe less, depending, um, out of a fly. Just little things you can do to make your fly last slightly longer. And that's it. As you can see, um, with the thread base, we've got a lovely shaped quill body uh, for this dry fly. Again, back to the CDC um, and a slightly different uh, wing shape again. So the first fly I did had uh, the natural curves facing upwards because it was a front facing wing, so it curled up. The second fly was an emerger uh, with a wing facing backwards, so the natural curves going back and it sat flat. With this one, this is the adult. So the wing is gonna be formed, and it's gonna sit like this, sort of vertically up on the fly. So what we're gonna do is the natural curves, we're gonna put them against each other. So this wants to go to the left, or my left, this one wants to go to the right. So we're gonna put them together so they meet in the middle. Now what that's gonna allow me to do is once they're married up, it's gonna allow me to put that wing vertical, as you can see, and it comes in nice and tight together. Now, if you didn't do that, and it peeled out from each other, that's fine, but I think visibly, it looks a lot better if it's sitting nice and, and snug together and sitting as, as a natural would. Uh, so for this, about probably the body, and maybe about a third or half the tail. I'm just gonna pinch that and loop it over and tie it in. Nice sitting really nicely on top there. Hi Pete. Um, snip the waist and then just tidy that up. That looks really nice. Now, you can leave it as that uh, if you want to. I know a lot of people, they put the dubbing, a little bit of dubbing behind the wing and they have a small head. I quite like the dubbing um, in front of the wing. It means you can kind of get away with any sort of small mistakes or, or a slightly larger head area and call it a thorax. So again, I'm gonna come back um, with that fox squirrel and then just put a little bit on, just see how it goes. And then maybe need a, a touch more. What I like to do is I have a little bit of extra on the bottom. So if I need a touch more, I haven't got to keep going back to my uh, pack it, I can just whack it straight up 
and then whatever's left over I can pick off put back in the bag and that's it um, quick double whip finish and uh, and that's the fly finished and again with, with three patterns um, representing you know two three well two stages of one insect and a completely different insect itself I've only used four materials so it's it's a really good way with these sorts of flies to minimize uh, what you use but still get some great patterns out of it so again with that fox squirrel it's a little bit scruffy it's got a lovely impression of legs and that fly is going to sit beautifully see the wing sits on top and the profile of the fly is going to look absolutely fantastic when it's on the water like so cheers paula um final fly is is one that i just i couldn't be without on on any river session um it's the retire sedge um it's an incredible fly i mean i'm sure most of the people here watching will, will know what a retire sedge is um very famous pattern and i learned recently from uh, howard croston you know current world champion how to tie it properly <laughs> so that's how i do it now obviously before you know it still worked but it wasn't maybe the original so um i i think from from what i've watched this is this is the original so i hope i do it justice um so again this is a size 12 um sprite dry fly hook uh, and this is the correct size unlike the others that i'm tying for the demo um this is the correct size hook for this fly this size i do tie them sort of down depending on again on the hatch but down to 16s but a 12 for the specifically for the retire um is, is a good size to use so for the tail or the shuck um i've just got some sort of creamy um antron and then all we're going to do is just pull little bits of it out and what that will hopefully eventually do is create a small sort of taper if you like um, you don't want a straight shuck because obviously no insect has a perfectly straight cut shuck. So a small taper as such um, is absolutely perfect. And you can sort of rub that together. I'm just going to tie that off the back there. And then tie that in. This is, this is the wonderful thing about the retire is that you can create an illusion of, of quite a big fly without actually having too much on it. So it's going to look like a really big, uh, chunky sedge, but actually when a fish takes it, it crumples down into absolutely nothing, which is the awesome thing about it. So just going to tie that in, tidy it up. Again, sticking with that, that olive thread, it doesn't matter too much um, thread-wise, unless the, you want the colour to show through. It's, it doesn't really matter. Um, so that shuck's slightly too long. So... With the shuck being ever so slightly too long, just for my personal preference, um, rather than kind of cutting it, as I mentioned before, the whole reason why we tapered it is to look like an actual shuck. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in at an angle and just snip that off at an angle there. And you see you still maintain that nice shape, but I've taken a little bit off the end, which is exactly what I wanted to do. So for the body of this, I've just got some, some hairs here. Um, I'm pretty sure this is similar if not you know very close to the original i think any sort of dubbing of this color um will be absolutely fine um with this again keeping it sparse but not um a dubbing on the rope too tight so again it is this whole idea of creating an illusion of bulk so um you've actually haven't got a huge amount of dubbing on there but it looks like a lot because it's it's been dubbed on very lightly and then you sort of put that on like so. And they've got a lovely tapered uh, sedge shape there. And you brush it out a little bit if you want to. Like so. Nice. Tidy that up. Um, for the wing, so there's three parts to the wing. So we've got a bit of coastal deer hair. Um, just snip a small amount off. You don't need a huge amount for this. It's only... This is only going to be the underwing. So what you do is when you snip it off, grab the very, very tips, uh, and then you can get brushes for this. I use my fingers. Um, you want to brush out all of those inconsistent fibers, all the fluff, 
all the sort of off ends and you've got a nice clean uh, bunch and then just whack it in your stacker and then tap on the table like so and it will come out nice and neat. You don't have to stack it, um, I just quite like to do it. I can be a bit of a perfectionist of my fly tying so if I can make scruffy flies slightly neater I will do. Um, wing wise probably about not all the way down the shuck probably about you know again a third of the way down the shuck um with with deer hair what you'll find is if you pull it in too tight too quickly it will splay everywhere and it will go absolutely crazy so if you put a couple of slightly lighter turns on and pull down gently it stops it spinning spinning for one and it also means you can sort of control the splay slightly better so just by gently tightening you can then rub it together and that just keeps it all together nicely like so and that's your first bit of the wing and then I'm just going to snip that off like so and pop that in the bin now next part of the wing so let's say it's, it's a three part stage this wing Got a bit of um, grey antron and uh, sorry, yeah, grey antron, but it's aero dry wing. So with aero dry wing, he comes in as you can see here. There's four strands. You probably want two, maybe three of these. Again, it depends on the size of the fly, but that that'll be ample. Um, and then that's just going to come on. Hey Tim, um, whack that on top. And that's going to be your middle piece. Uh, the one thing about Antron is it, it takes floating really, really well. So it's uh, it's really going to help your fly stay up. And then what I'll do with this is I'll just brush that out. Because the deer hair will splay nicely, but the Antron won't unless you give it a little bit of uh, persuasion. So I'll brush that out. And then what I'll do is I'll just... Uh, come in like so and just little so if you notice that uh, little cuts like that um, very 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 small as I was working up the wing and that means that Antron isn't again it's not going to be a straight cut it's going to be tapered and, and fit in the wing a lot better it's going to look a lot um, more natural and then back with that coastal deer hair exactly the same amount again pinch those tips uh, pull out all the fluff, brush it, grab the bottom and then pull out the smaller ones from the top again. A little bit too much on there so get rid of that and then back into the stacker like so. And this is that third and final part of the wing there. And all we're going to do is again going to whack that on top two light turns slowly bring it down and just between your fingers small wiggle there and that's just going to stop it from going too far everywhere see a couple do escape but if you sort of work it between your fingers as you go it does stop the majority from spinning around and then we're going to come in just snip that excess bit of waste off and then holding it all in, come in with your thread and just tie it all up, like so, nice. And you can see, that it's, it looks like quite a bulky fly, but there really isn't much to it at all. There's, there's no bolt whatsoever. Um, this coastal deer hair is lovely because it's really, really fine. Um, and that means it will, it will squash into nothing. When a, when a fish takes it. For the front, a bit of pine squirrel. Um, it's quite nice on some thoraxes, especially on this one, to um, have a, a slightly darker thorax to the fly in comparison to the body. So I'm just gonna, again, keeping it sparse. This is just to tidy up that head area. Give it a nice thorax. And then come over to the front. And a double whip finish. 
like so. And that is the finished article. Just like so. Again, awesome pattern in summer. You know, even throughout the year, really. It's a great searching fly, this one. Um, but obviously, when there's, a, when there's a hatch, it sedges. Fish go bonkers for it. Fantastic pattern. Again, as with the three I did prior, as you can see, they're, they're patterns that I just I couldn't live without, really. I really couldn't. So the sedge, the adder olive, the emerger, and then the small sort of midge pattern or when fish are sort of uh, picking off that tiny stuff that you can't imitate. Um, the four patterns that I'm going to use you know, from now on for the, for the rest of the, certainly the trout season, and then these, these smaller ones, tied smaller, will be, will be fantastic for the grayling. So I hope you enjoyed, guys. Um, thank you so much for, for coming, coming along and, uh, and joining us for this first uh, live stream and uh, hope to see you in the future. Thanks again.